Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome back to another Adobe XD Masterclass. My name is Howard Pinsky, Senior XD Evangelist here at Adobe. Hope you're all well on this Friday afternoon. If you are tuning in live here on Behance, let me know in the chat who you are and where you're tuning in from. We've got George and Eric and Cody and Joshua, Arshad, Jack, Katerina. Great to see all of you. I am still recovering from COVID, so my voice is a little bit raspy. I might cough from time to time, so I do apologize for that. But we are here with Masterclass number 95. There's five more until the big 100. Let's go ahead and get going today. So what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be exploring some branding and YouTube thumbnail design. You know, I was recently looking at my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Howard Pinsky, and nothing really seems consistent. The thumbnails aren't terrible. You know, I spend a lot of time making sure they're visually appealing, but they don't really tell much of a story. And looking at them, you may not know what's a video on design, what's a video on prototyping, what's a video on whatever it might be. So I've been thinking about rebranding some of the videos, including the ones that are part of series. Um, and, you know, let's try to figure that out today. It could be kind of fun. And I know a lot of you have been asking about branding and YouTube design, thumbnails, social media assets, that sort of thing. Those could be a fun opportunity to explore what that could look like. Hey, Joshua from San Mateo and Mawenda, great to see you. And as a reminder, if anyone has questions throughout this masterclass, definitely throw them in the chat. I will be taking a peek from time to time. All right, so let's go ahead and begin. What we're gonna do first, before we actually dive into Adobe XD, is I'm gonna to go to Behance. I know a lot of people ask, you know, I wanna do X, but I don't really know how to start or I don't know what it should look like. Websites like Behance or Adobe Stock or Dribble are great places to start with some of that stuff. So in this case, we might wanna look up something like thumbnails, right? And right off the bat, we're gonna get a ton of different designs that we can start getting some inspiration from you know obviously this one here is very visually appealing but in my case maybe a little bit too much you know I have to really start to think about what my content is going to contain right if I go to my YouTube channel one more time you know we've got very the main focus is to really highlight what I'm designing right plus you know, maybe some design flair here and there Something like this, again, while very visually appealing, may not work for my particular uh, needs, right? Um, something like this is really interesting. Uh, in this case, some of this it might be educational based, right? Sometimes it's very important to show the educator, which I don't do very well. And I'm going to try to bring that in. Um, there have been a lot of studies on YouTube thumbnails and showing a face if that person is in the video helps a lot in terms of attracting clicks, right? Hey, Drew, great to see you. So something like this could be interesting, but in my case, I also have that added aspect where I have to show, you know, an iPhone mock-up or a website design or some sort of design, right? So there's a lot going on that has to all be incorporated into one thumbnail, which is a fun challenge, right? But definitely go to Behance and start browsing some uh, inspiration. And then also Adobe Stock, right? Now, one thing you're going to notice, and one thing I've definitely noticed, if I look up something like thumbnail, <clears throat> we get some okay results, depending on what you're looking for, right? Many of these, you can definitely license and use, and, you know, they'll do the job, but a lot of them are very generic, and you, that's what you'll get with stock websites, whether it's premium or free, there is a free section as well. But what I found is that if you look up something like poster, on Adobe Stock or other stock websites, you'll start to get some really interesting looking results, right? And a lot of these have interesting elements like these, you know, uh, dots and shapes and things like that, things like this. They're not specifically for YouTube thumbnails, but you're definitely gonna get some more interesting results, like I was saying, right? So that's a, that's a pretty good place to start. And then you can really nail, 
nail it down. You do like, let's say, modern poster. Right? So again, not specific for YouTube thumbnails, but they could work. You can definitely start extracting elements. Now, I know a lot of you have asked in the past, I can't really afford stock credits or, you know, I don't have budget available. If you go to the free section right here at the top, and I'm going to get into designing in just a moment, but you can search basically the same thing. Let's say modern poster. And all the results from this section are free to license, right? So some of them may not be as premium, but you're still going to get some pretty good stuff that you can license. Now, a lot of stock contributors, what they'll do is they'll release, you know, a few free assets and then lead you to some of the premium ones. So you'll still find some pretty good stuff that you can use in your design. All right. So enough talk. Let me go ahead and hop over to Adobe XD. Hey, Oliver, great to see you. And what we're going to do, we're going to start with a blank template and um, a blank artboard, I should say. And because this is for YouTube thumbnails in specific, we want a 1920 by 1080 pixel artboard, which is 16 by nine. So this one, the web artboard is gonna work perfect for this particular example. And if we have time, we'll go ahead and start adapting what we design here for uh, different formats. And that's an interesting branding exercise, adapting YouTube thumbnails for Instagram stories and Facebook posts and Twitter posts and all that fun stuff. Now, one thing I like to do when I'm starting a process like this is to bring that inspiration onto my artboard or into a separate document. So whether I got it from Behance or Adobe Stock or whatever it might be, I like to start bringing some of that stuff on there just so I can reference some colors and shapes. And even if I'm not using the elements specifically, it does help quite a bit. So I think this one over here, all of these are licensed from Adobe Stock, which is where you saw. I kind of like this, right? Obviously, I'm not going to be making videos on summer party cocktail bars, but when I was browsing these assets, the colors really stood out to me. And I have to <clears throat> remember that I'm trying to brand my YouTube thumbnails so that we have, they're, they're very, not just visually appealing, but also you can look at them and say, okay, that's a design video, that's a prototyping video, that's a whatever video. So I think there's a few different color schemes we can definitely use with this. And this is an Adobe Illustrator file, which I can drag directly into Adobe XD. And it's going to load. And the great thing about these is they're all vector based. So if I did need to grab some of these elements, I can very easily do so. I can change the colors, so on and so forth, right? So I've got all these really fun looking designs, which I'm going to actually just copy and paste onto this artboard. These are very large. Excuse me. Um, another way you can do it is if you go up to the file menu and down to import, you'll be able to import your Adobe Illustrator files directly onto the current document. So there's that document. There's also documents like if we do have time, I might want to explore something along these lines. And I think what we're also going to do is we're going to create some basic shapes. So I think a lot of these thumbnails and a lot of these of the assets that I create I use these shapes like random X's and O's and squiggly lines and dots and things like that. And we can definitely use repeat grids and all that fun stuff. All right, so let's go ahead and start designing. Again, we're gonna kind of run with some of this here, at least the color scheme. And then we're gonna see what that ta where, where that takes us. Obviously things like this, there's a lot of revisions involved. So what we're gonna do, I'm gonna start with the background of this particular thumbnail. So I have the artboard selected. And over within the properties inspector, I'm going to open up my fill picker. Instead of a solid color, I might want to switch it over to a linear gradient. So I'm going to do that. And then the top color, we're going to try going with this nice greenish blue up at the top. And then bottom, I'm also going to sample this color down here. Does the background music sound weird to anyone else? Howard's voice seems Fine, could be my headphones. That's a good question. Um, if anyone else is experiencing some issues with the background music, let me know. I'll see what I can do. Music sounds normal. Okay, might just be Eric. And I'm going to set this diagonally. Now, one thing I will note is in this particular case, I did license these posters from Adobe Stock. So, you know, I don't, I don't really feel bad I don't know if that's the right word, but I don't really feel bad about using the same colors, using the same assets and that sort of thing. If you are 
just kind of looking for inspiration online, you're just grabbing random JPEGs and you're not licensing things, keep in mind that you don't want to push it too far. You know, definitely get some color inspiration. You know, things like dots or squiggly lines, pretty generic, used everywhere. Um, but don't copy too much, especially if you're going to be using your, your designs for commercial purposes or, uh, you know, something that's going to be displayed publicly. So, you know, if you if you are going to go that far, I would definitely recommend licensing your images. That way, you know, you, you have full rights to use it for uh, commercial purpose and that sort of thing. All right, next thing I might want to do now that I have the background in place, I kind of like this big circle in the background here, but I might want to mix it up just a little bit. Back in Finder, let's see if I have it here. I don't have it here. Um, I found another example, which was kind of fun. It was basically a circle, but the circle was kind of broken up into different sections. So it was almost staggered. And I think that could be kind of fun just to mix things up a little bit. So if I grab my ellipse tool, shortcut key E, I'm going to drag out a circle. And what we want to do is we want to break this circle up into essentially four sections. Of course, you could do three sections, five sections, anything like that. But what I want is I'm going to use my rectangle tool. My smart guides are helping me out make sure everything lines up. I'm going to drag this across. Now, of course, I could estimate maybe this is one section and then eh, let's see. Uh, that was pretty close, right? But what I could do just to make sure I get everything perfect is stretch this across the entire circle. So from top to bottom and left to right, I'm going to change the color very quickly. And inside of my properties inspector, I'm going to divide the height by the number of segments that I want. So in this case, it's going to be four, right? So that way, whoop, we have four boxes that perfectly fit this rectangle, right? Now, what we're going to want to do, because these are going to be separate uh, elements, right? We're going to want to duplicate each of these four times. So I have the ellipse selected one, two, three, four, and then the rectangle one. Actually, I can just drag this down because we're going to want over top just like that. And then what we're going to want to do is we are going to want to go and select one rectangle and one ellipse. And then inside of the properties inspector, we're going to use the this one over here, this third one, which is intersect, right? So I'm going to select this one and intersect, intersect, and intersect. So if you take a look at it, it looks just like it did before, but each of these is now a nice segment. So I can very easily just shift these, maybe shift this one over a little bit like that. And then maybe, oops, and then maybe shift this one a little bit more, right? All right, now it looks okay, right? But I think what, what's really going to need to d be done for this case is we have to change up the colors because right now it just looks like a solid shape with almost looks like a ghost kind of you put like a little eye over here. I don't know what I'm doing, but put a little eye. Maybe there'll be a mouth over. I don't know. Whatever. Um, so <laughs> kind of looks like <coughs> <coughs> I'm losing my mind. Kind of looks like a ghost, but it just looks like a solid shape, right? That's kind of staggered a little bit. We want to really make sure that we can see each of those sections. So I think that's where we can maybe pull in some of the colors from this background. So if I select one segment, I can press I on my keyboard. Maybe I'll choose that and I'll just kind of go down very subtly and just sample some of these colors, right? Just so we have this kind of like a gradient going on. This color at the top, I'm not loving. Maybe I'll shift it. I could do. Not too bad. Music not normal. Oh, it's not normal for you either. Hmm. Let me see what's going on with the music. Let's try. I don't know if that's going to work. If not, um, I will just pause the music. It's interesting that some... <coughs> Excuse me. Some people, music's fine. Others, not so much. Um, and it is, it, it's sort of lo-fi music. It's supposed to be, um, what is it called? The, uh, it's from audio, but it's in that kind of lo-fi range. But anyways, so we've got our shape and I might want to maybe rotate it. Possibly. We'll see. I'm going to group this called the circle and position it over to the left. Because what I'm thinking, 
is sp specifically for mobile design videos, I might want to place maybe a phone over top of this, and this could kind of be the background for that phone, right? <coughs> Excuse me. Again, I'm recovering from COVID and I have this lingering cough that's just incredibly annoying. Um, it's no fun. All right. Now, I might also want this circle to interact with some elements or some colors that might be behind in the background, right? Now, on this one here, you can kind of see there's very subtle diagonal lines going across, and we might want to do something similar to that. So if I grab my rectangle one more time, I'm going to drag one out, and I can either rotate it like this, or I can press re return to access the path, and maybe just kind of pull this over a touch, right? Something like that. And then I can either select one, hold down alter option, duplicate, and then continue that process all the way across the artboard, or I can use a repeat grid. So over within the properties inspector, we've got our repeat grid option, Boop. and I can drag additional lines across, right? And I can pull them back if I want to. Let's try something like that. We'll see what that looks like. All these lines. I'm going to move it to the background just by dragging it inside of the layers panel. And then I might want to experiment with some blend mode so that these white lines can interact with the different colors that are back there. So I can do something like maybe soft light. Not too bad. Overlay might be a bit too vibrant. Yeah, that's what I thought. So soft light and maybe just drop the opacity quite a bit. You can also try a different color. So maybe black potentially has a nice little bit, bit of contrast. So there's white and there's black. I don't know. What do you all think in the chat? Do you like the black lines or the darker lines or the lighter lines? Hmm? 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 I don't know. I think they're both kind of nice. All right. So we have some lines going on. And then, you know, I, I kind of like these dots. And we can use a very similar method to create dots. So if I just create, let's say, a very small circle, maybe about 10 pixels. Commander control R to access a repeat grid, and I can drag a few dots out, and maybe four down. And then just like I did with the lines, I can expand this maybe to a 60, 60, black, black, darker lines. All right, I made a good choice. And I'll position this right about here. All right, that could work. Now, things are looking a little bit busy, but once we start adding in some, you know, uh, kind of placeholders for the actual phone and probably my picture as well, things will hopefully start to kind of come together a little bit. And then speaking of my picture, I might want, I don't want really me to be the focus of this particular thumbnail. I kind of want me to kind of be tucked in a corner, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to, let's create... A shape up here and I might want to round out the corners quite a bit right something like this and then maybe there might be sort of like a background or a border and then the actual shape that's going to contain me so I'm going to duplicate this pull this in a little bit I can hold down my alter option key to see how far it is from the other shape it's about 36 looks like and this is about 34, there we go, that's about a bit better. I'm gonna pull this back a touch so it visually lines up. And then this shape in the background, we might wanna pull in some of the colors that we're using for maybe this circle, right? So I'm gonna, once again, apply a linear gradient and maybe the top color is gonna be a bit darker this time. And then the bottom color might transition to a lighter color, maybe. Maybe we'll keep it a little bit more subtle. Let's sample this color and then pull this out a little bit. Maybe this will be a touch darker up here. Something like that. We'll see what that looks like. And then I might want to rotate this. <clears throat> now, this, this image here, this um, shape here is going to be uh, where me, my picture goes in. So I'm going to hop over to my Creative Cloud Libraries, 
Or of course, if you have a photo on your computer, you can grab one there. And I believe in this library here, I should have a picture of me and whoop, pop that in. Now, I may not want me sideways, right? So, so I have to start thinking, you know, do I want to just rotate this back a little bit and kind of have me up in the corner here? I don't know. A lot of different ways we can do this, right? That could potentially work. We'll see what that looks like. Or maybe I do want side. I don't know. Now, one thing I will mention is you can't rotate an image inside of an image uh, shape mask. But what we can do is we can do this, right? I can... Let me undo this for a second. I'm going to duplicate this. Oops, where did I go? There we go. Drag me in into... Yeah, this one here. And then I want this shape on top. I'm going to mask it. So object mask with shape. That way I can now dive in here, select me and then rotate it and then enlarge it, right? That's a bit better. All right. Should we always go with pair number of elements and pixels in design? Someone's asking. Pair number of elements and pixels. I'm not sure what that means. Um, clarify it and uh, I'll see if I can take a look. All right, so again, may not be necessary depending on the type of thumbnails that you're designing to put you or the presenter in the thumbnail, but for educational videos, it does help as long as that person is actually appearing in the video. Otherwise, it may not make too much sense. All right, I might want to change up this a little bit. Maybe I'll shift it. I think that could work. I'm going to pull this up so we don't have that corner there, or I can just bring back this corner like that. All right. So that's looking okay. And then I might want to just scatter a few additional elements throughout this design. So maybe down here we might want almost like a moon, sort of. Maybe it'll fade out a little bit. And then at the top, we might want sort of like a lighter purple. Something like that. Just fun little elements kind of floating around. And considering this is more of a, I hear a frying sound. Interesting. So it's got to be the music, right? Possibly. Okay, I'm going to mute the music. It is muted. Uh, let me know if you still hear that sound. I don't know what else it could be. I don't have any other... I don't have anything around. So let me know if, if it's the music that was making that frying sound or something else. All right. Now, again, considering this is more, you know, geared at design videos, we may also want to start incorporating maybe some design icons, things like a pen tool, for example, right? So, you know, one thing we can do, we can hop over to our plugins, go to the icons for design plugin. Let's see if they have... I search pen, right? So we have something like this, a pen nib, which is very similar to something like the pen tool, right? Which we have in XD and other applications. So that could potentially work, or we can create our own. So that frying noise is gone now that I muted. That's so weird. This is, it's, it's the same playlist that I always play during my streams, and I haven't touched any of the settings. So I'm going to look into that and figure that out. Um, but that's very strange. Anyway, it was sizzling in the background. Hmm. Very strange. Now we don't have any fun music playing in the background. Anyways, so what we can do also do is maybe create our own pen tool, right? And you can definitely create some pretty fancy icons in applications like Adobe XD. So what we might want to do is let me actually go ahead and create a new artboard. Just so we have a nice blank space to create some icons. And maybe with the ellipse tool. I'm going to draw one out. And what we want to do, we want to have that like kind of taper at the top. So if I double click on this, let me actually change the color. If I double click on the shape, I can access the path and I can maybe move this one up this point at the top. Maybe I'll pull in the handles a touch. And then down at the bottom, we almost want it to, we want to curve, but we also want it to come to a little bit of a point, right? 
where we want a straight line at the bottom. So if I maybe drag this down right about here, possibly. I might want to add a point here and a point here. Now, I probably don't want to double click on this point because then it's going to kind of sharpen up this line on the right hand side. It's not terrible, but it did sharpen it up a little bit. But what I might want to do is drag the point here. So I can hold down. Now, if I were to just not hold down anything on my keyboard and drag this in, depending on how this point was set up, it would adjust both of the curves, right? But in this case, because we added it later, it, it didn't. But if I move that inwards just like that, I'll do the same thing to the other side, right? Then I can possibly just delete that point there. And now we have a nice straight line at the bottom. Now, of course, what we could have also done is use something like the um, sub a subtract Boolean option uh, to do basically the same thing. Let me show you how that would work. Right, so we got to this point here. And what I can do is use a rectangle. Select and boop, right? So either way, that might actually have been pretty easy. And then down below, what we might want is the, the bottom part of the pen, right? So I'm gonna grab my rectangle. Let's draw one out. Let's round out the corners quite a bit for this particular shape. Let's try about 16, looks pretty good. And we'll use the same color. And then down below, we might want a smaller shape. So I'm gonna pull this in a touch. The corners at the top are going to be pulled back. So I'm gonna hold down my Alter Option key and then drag those back. And at the bottom, we may not need as much of a curve. So we can pull these back as well. You can either do that on canvas like I just did or within your Properties Inspector. Let's try about eight, see what that looks like. And that's getting there. It almost looks like a pen, right? But it kind of also looks like a brush at the moment. So what we need is we need some cutouts in the middle. So if I grab my ellipse, pop this in the center. Oops, wrong way, there we go. Maybe I'll make it a little bit bigger. And then at the top, we want a cutout right in the middle that goes all the way like that. Right. And you could potentially round out the corners or just leave it as is. That's kind of fun if it's rounded like that. That looks kind of nice, right? Now, of course, we want to use these shapes to cut a hole in the icon. Now, it looks okay right now, but if we were to take this icon and copy it and then paste it on this thumbnail, because we had white shapes, it's just not going to work very well. And of course, we could change the color of those knockout shapes to match the background. But if the background is very different, like right over here, it's just not going to work, right? So what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to use these shapes. So I'm going to select this one, hold down shift, select this one, and then select the one that I actually want to cut a hole in. And then back with the properties inspector, I'm going to create a subtraction, right? Just like that. So it looks identical. But if I were to now take this exact same thing and hop over here, now we have a nice cutout, which is exactly what we're looking for. Now, a lot of times on you know pen tool icons or designs, you might also see one of the biggest functions of using the pen tool is you know creating curves and lines. So what we can do here, and maybe this is a little bit too thick. So I'm gonna bring this in. That's one of the benefits of using subtraction Boolean options is you can e easily dive in and make changes to those elements. So I might want to create maybe a square here. Maybe I'll round out the corners. Let's try eight. That could work. And then we might want a line going across. Try about 12, we'll see what that looks like. Make sure it's centered. And then on the ends, we have, you know, very similar to when we double clicked on this shape here and we selected a point, we have those, you know, little points that we can move around and adjust the curve. So we'll do something similar. So with the ellipse tool, that looks pretty good. And then one on this side as well. 
Looks like it's about 73. Not a great number, but you know, it'll do. There we go. All right. And then we may also want an actual curve, right? So this one's a straight line. We might want a curve. Now this one, there's a few different ways we can do this. <coughs> we can do a similar method to what we did down here at the bottom. So if I grab my ellipse tool, I'm going to draw out, let's say to about here. I'm going to apply a border with the same color and probably the same weight. So 12, I think it was. And then we can, there are a few different ways we can do this. We can either use the rectangle and draw one out like this, and then, you know, make a, a subtraction. Now, I will note that because we haven't converted the actual uh, border into a shape yet, if I were to do that, it would just get a little bit strange, right? Um, but if I go ahead and select the shape, object, path, and then outline stroke, now we can basically do that. And now we have this nice little curve, right? I don't know if I love the, the actual curve of it, right? So I'm gonna just backtrack a little bit. Make it, pull that down a touch. Maybe move this down a little bit. That's a little bit better, but I did forget this section. All right, that's a little bit better, not too bad. And then down at the bottom, I may also want to put a few handles. So we could, you know, continue and just grab um, an ellipse, or we can do something a little bit more square down here. Right about there, and then one on this side. And there we go. And just like that, we now have a pen tool icon. Now, looking at this from a distance, it looks a little bit unbalanced. The, the icon looks a little bit too large compared to the curves at the top or the, you know, the handles. Um, this also looks a little bit too thick, so I might, you know, just bring this in or just select the shape and then bring that in a touch. It's a little bit better. Maybe pull this in a little bit as well. Bring that up a little bit. There we go. It still looks a little bit off. Um, but, you know, we just did this in a few minutes. So we spent a little bit more time. We can probably make sure it looks a little bit more balanced, but it's not bad, right? So we have our pen tool icon. Now, one thing we're going to notice if I group this or if I use a component, whatever it might be, if I were to shrink this down or bring it back up, because we're using outlines or strokes for certain elements like this line here, um, it looks a little bit strange when it's scaled. So now that I've kind of figured out, you know, 12 pixels looks pretty good. What I want to make sure to do is anything that has an outline or a stroke, I want to make sure to um, path and then outline that stroke. That way, you know, when we do resize it up or down, everything looks really nice. And if we do export it as an SVG or whatever it might be, we won't have any issues. So we have our pen tool icon. And I guess while we're here, we can go ahead and start creating some additional shapes that we're going to be using throughout our, um, you, you know, thumbnails or branding assets. And this is one thing I've been meaning to get around to is to create a library of just, you know, random shapes that you might, we might be using. Uh, one of which might be something like a phone, right? So on this case, I might want to have some sort of a phone mock-up that I can place some images in. And let me do that over here, actually, just so we can kind of proportionally scale everything. We'll do something like this, right? And we're going to make this a very simple phone. It's not going to have buttons or any of that fancy stuff. It might have a notch. We'll see. But we have a shape here, and then we're going to round out the corners. And even though this is probably going to be, you know, iPhone-esque, it could be basically anything because it can be fairly generic. So I'll round it out like that. And maybe for now, we'll just create a darker. You know, we can probably keep it white. And then on the inside, we want place for the screen. So if I duplicate this shape, I'm going to bring this in a little bit and bring this in as well. And just like with the area over here to the right, we're going to want to pull back these corners just a touch so it's visually aligned. 
16. Let me make sure that we have about the same. There we go, 16 to 16. So we can leave it as this, right? And that could but it certainly work if we just pop in an image. Uh, if you do want, you can definitely add in the lovely notch, right? So what we can do is we'd probably add it to this shape or even subtract it from this shape. So let's go ahead and just to kind of show you how this would work. Notch looks something like this. And I'll round out the corners down here. Now we could just kind of pull this up and call it a day, but on the actual iPhone itself, they kind of like curve outwards a little bit. So what we're going to want to do is I'm going to just pull this, these handles back. I'm going to pull this up a little bit. I think that, uh, and actually we probably don't have to do that. I'm going to add a point here, add a point on this side. Now, if I were to simply select this point here and move it on out, it's very sharp, right? So we're gonna want to make sure that it's curved. So we're double clicking on each of the points and then we can pull these out just like that, right? And now if I select this and the screen and then subtract, we now have our cutout. Now this is, looking at this now, it's not perfect. It's far from perfect actually. Let's just make some changes to this. This should be a little bit thinner. And then this. Something like that. That's a little bit better. It's probably not perfect, um, but it could work. If you want to just create a very quick iPhone mock-up or phone mock-up in general, that could work. And the nice thing is because this was created using a shape, right? and we can still use Boolean op, uh, objects as masks. I can now hop over to Finder and hop over in this folder here, grab an image and boop, pop it in there, right? Now we're not seeing the notch right now because we have a white iPhone or a white mockup on a white phone, right? But if I go ahead and change this, Let's say I change it to, maybe we'll add in some purple into this, right? Now we can see that notch. Is this supposed to be long? Let's see, what, the, what does the phone look like? Yeah, I think uh, maybe it's a little bit, needs to be a little bit longer, but it's not too bad. That could work. I mean, ideally, we just wouldn't have a notch, right? But we're not there yet. Almost good. Something like that. That could work. All right, so I'm going to make sure to group these elements. Call this phone. I don't really love the purple on the green, so I'd probably, you know, definitely make sure to adjust those colors a little bit. But the idea is that I can now kind of move this and use this for, you know, highlighting the various designs that will be showcased in my videos, right? All right, anyways, back to the shapes. So again, you know, I, I just love throwing random shapes um, throughout my designs. Sometimes you'll see them on my thumbnails, sometimes you'll see them in my social assets, and that sort of thing. So let's go ahead and create some random shapes. And some of these will be a little bit, um, you know, simple. Some of them will be a little bit more complex, but things like circles, right? And it seems so silly just to create a circle, but having a library of all these shapes you can very easily pull from, it does save a lot of time in the long run, right? Circle, right? Very simple, very simple. Uh, next might be an X of some sort. Now, of course you can grab your text tool and make an X, but the problem with that is, you know, the lines are a little bit strange. It looks like the letter X, but we want more of, you know, an X, right? I don't know what that means. But we're going to do something similar, right? About 32. Sample this color. Duplicate. And then we can rotate this by about 45 and then negative 45. 
and we have an X. I'm going to make sure to name some of these. There we go. A bit bigger to match our circle. And going back to what we were talking about earlier with the um, stroke scaling as we are uh, designing, it's one thing you have to consider when you're designing things like this is, you know, this circle may be used on a much larger surface. It might be used on a much smaller surface. So, right, because it maintains that size, it's going to look a bit strange. So what you'll probably want to do before you start exporting these and saving these to libraries is just outline that stroke. So path, outline, stroke. That way, if I resize it up or down, it stays nice and consistent, right? Cody says X shape rather than the X, the, rather than X the letter. Yes, that's, that's probably what I was trying to say. My brain is still very foggy. Um, we may also want a circle that is maybe, or a half circle. Now, there are a few ways we can do this. We can either use our dashes and our gaps inside of the properties inspector. So we can do something like, I don't know, 1000 for the gap, and then kind of estimate like this. And then the benefit of this is that you can do a, a half circle or you can do kind of whatever that is, 25% or 75%, anything like that, right? So that's one way you can do it. You have a little bit more control over that, but because we're gonna be outlining the strokes anyway, we might as well do what we did previously and just you know add a rectangle on top of it, select. Now this, we're gonna run into that problem again, right? Mm. We wanna make sure to outline the stroke, command and control, alter option, and then O or object path outline stroke, and then boop, subtract, right? There's a little bit poking out at the bottom. All right, there we go. So that looks pretty good. We can also use, um, you know, a circle for a to use as a mask, right? So if we wanted, you know, diagonal lines, for example, let's add a circle here. A lot of circles and lines and things like that. We might want to fill this in. And then inside of it, we might want diagonal lines, almost like a cutout, right? So what we can do here is we can either use a rectangle or a line. I'll use a rectangle. You can rotate it. Now, similar to before, right, we have our line, and it looks okay because it's white on white, but when you bring this onto another surface with a colored background, it's going to look a little bit strange, right? So what we're going to want to do, let me make this a little bit larger. I'll rotate it. I'm going to use a repeat grid. Something like that, and it looks pretty good, right? But we want to either mask the shapes inside the circle or use or actually make a cutout, right? So in this case, we'll probably want to make a cutout. So if I go ahead and do that, that doesn't work, right? And that's because we have our repeat grid. I also selected the wrong shape. So that does work. But, um, you know, one thing you, you probably want to do is ungroup that repeat grid if you don't want to make any of those changes. Or you can keep it as is. That way you can always, you know, adjust like that. That could work. All right. That looks pretty fancy. And another shape we might want to do is, or maybe, you know, very similar to what we did over here with our dots. I'm actually just copy this and paste it over here. Now we have some dots. Things are coming together. Now, another thing we can do is you may have seen on some posters or some, you know, shape libraries, they might have very similar shapes to this, but they're, you know, dotted or dashed, right? So if I duplicate this downwards, I know this, this masterclass kind of went in a whole different direction, but a lot of these objects are going to be used in our branding for the thumbnails and our social assets. So what I can do here is maybe make this a little bit thinner, maybe about 16, but I might want to increase the gaps. And then maybe I want like a dotted outline. So I'll want to change uh, this over here to rounded, right? And then experiment with our gaps. Maybe I'll bring this down even more to about eight. Right, something like that, possibly. Maybe even... Yeah, something like that, right? Gap of 20, size of eight. 
and we can do the same thing for lines and rectangles and yada yada yada. Now, to make our life a little bit easier, what we can do is once we create a shape like this, is we can select this shape here, copy to our clipboard, Command and Control C, hop over here, right click, and then paste appearance or Command and Control uh, Shift, I believe, and then V. No, not not Shift. Command and Control Alt or Option V. So it'll take basically the same style and place it on here. Now, you might have to adjust the gaps or the dashes a little bit because it doesn't line up perfectly. Squares are always a little bit more tricky because the, the sides are a little bit strained. So that would, I would probably manually do separately. Now we can also start, you know, kind of combining some shapes. So for example, if I take maybe a polygon, Maybe I'll flip this upside down, something like that. And then we can take one of these shapes here and then just place it over top of it. Now it doesn't look that exciting, but eventually you might start adding some color to some of your shapes. So I might want to maybe add like a bit of a purplish blue, a blurple, right? And then we have a shape like this, or we have something like this over top of it or behind it. Let me put that back over there, right? And all of a sudden you're creating some additional elements that kind of, you know, go well together. Um, let's see, what else, what other shapes can we create? Well, let's move on from the shapes. So we have our, you know, the beginning of our YouTube thumbnail. It's still not there yet. There's still some empty space. Maybe there might be some space for text, but we can what start to do is we can start to kind of use some of these elements. Oops to create some additional assets for other social platforms. So if I press the A key to access my artboard, if I hop down to maybe like an Instagram story, which is essentially the YouTube thumbnail, but rotated, right? So it's instead of 1920 by 1080, it's 1080 by 1920. Um, we could start bringing some of these assets over. So if I select the artboard here, I'm gonna copy to my clipboard and then paste the appearance on this artboard, just so I have the same color here. I can now start grabbing some of these elements. Maybe I'll make this a little larger so it overflows a touch. Let's grab our dots. Maybe I'll place those at the bottom just for interesting style. Place that up here. Maybe I'll change the color so it doesn't blend too much with the background. Or maybe I want it to blend more, I don't know. And then we can grab our phone, paste it over here. Now, in this case, I'll probably want to straighten it out. So I'll get rid of the, oops, what did I do? I'll get rid of the rotation, and then I'll make this nice and large. Now, because I didn't convert the shapes into paths, we do have some rounded corners that need to be adjusted. So I'll just dive in here and round those out. There it is. Round that out as well. And all of a sudden, we now have some assets for Instagram story, right? So if you, if you are concerned about making sure that your branding is kind of consistent throughout all your social assets or social platforms, I would definitely kind of go in this direction here. And as you're building out these documents, definitely go into your document assets, right? And then start adding some colors. Now, if I were to select this entire artboard, it's going to add all the colors, which might be a good thing, might be a little bit annoying depending on how many colors you have. And then you can start adding some of these elements, like all of these here, you can add them as components, right? Um, I want to add this color over here. Of course, if you had character styles, you can add those as well. Um, but we're, you know, we're making progress. And what's nice about this is now we can take this artboard here. Oops. And we can start exploring different color schemes. If you remember at the beginning of the masterclass, I mentioned that, you know, maybe a design thumbnail might be one color and a prototyping thumbnail might be another color, right? So we can now explore if we are kind of riffing off of this design here. We can explore what that could look like. 
So I might want to maybe select this color down at the bottom, maybe a lighter color, right? I'm not sure I love that color scheme, but you kind of get my drift, right? I don't know if this is going to work very well, but it might. It could work. And then I'll change this. I'll just kind of shift this in that direction, maybe in over here. There we go, right? So we have essentially the same design, but a bit of a different color. And one trick that may work depending on what you're designing and how things are set up is to actually start almost black and white, right? Just gray. So if I were to select the background, I'm gonna just pull these colors. Maybe it'll be light on the top, a little bit darker at the bottom. And what we can also potentially do is experiment with some opacity values as well. Maybe this might be 80 and then 60 and then 40, right? Just so we bring in some of the shapes in the background. And this over here might be a little bit lighter at the top. Now, of course, this looks a little bit ridiculous, and that, unless that's the style you're going for, but what we can do now is let me actually bring me to the top. I'm going to select a rectangle, draw one out across the entire artboard like that, place it behind me, and then experiment with some color. So if I, let's say, use something similar to this greenish blue, right? And then I can go into my blend modes. And you know, some blend modes will work better than others. Soft light, I mean, it really depends on the style, right, that you're going for. But something like multiply could start to get you in that direction. And then you can also introduce um, some colors or uh, uh, gradients as well. So I might wanna go maybe a blue at the top, maybe a purple down at the bottom. Something like that. Maybe I'll shift this a little bit, make it a bit brighter. So no longer do you have to go into each and every element and change those colors. And of course, anything that you don't want affected by this color, you can just grab, let's say our dots. Where are our dots? These are our dots and move it above just like that, right? So you basically just have to adjust the, the gray values. And then if you wanted something completely different, you would just duplicate and you would change the color. So maybe this one you might want more of a red, right? It's a bit harsh, but that could work, right? So again, you don't have to dive in and change every single color. You just change basically the shape of the top. And experimenting with different blend modes will definitely get you different results. So there's hard light. These are definitely on the lighter side, right? Soft light. Overlay is interesting, but you know, you're getting a very different feel to this, right? So if I select the background, if I wanted to change it, right, as you can see there, very different. Not sure I love that one, but that could work. Cody says, these color palettes are really fun. Yeah, speaking of colors, I am still working on that color library that I posted on Twitter a few weeks ago, I think. There are a lot of colors in it. Um, but I'm trying to get, you know, a nice range of colors from like retro to neon and um, all sorts of different things. So that'll be released. And I'll definitely continue working on the shapes library, which right now there's just a few little shapes here and there. Um, but I'm going to work on that as well. And things, you know, another thing that we can potentially add is Maybe like a, something like this, right? Just getting ideas as we're designing. It's probably a bit too much. And this is another opportunity to use something like a repeat grid, right? Command and control R. Oops, that's the wrong. Wrong shortcut. 
bring this back right to about there. Look at that. Now we have little squiggly lines. I guess I should probably end that at the top. There we go. Squiggly lines. Something like that, right? Um, and again, this, you know, this is a repeat grid, so I can dive in here and make some changes to it. I will have to pull this repeat grid out just a little bit more and adjust this, but there we go. Look at that. Squiggly line. Everyone loves a squiggly line. Anyways, that's going to wrap things up for me for today. Thanks for hanging in there with me. Again, I am recovering and I just feel eh, right? COVID's a weird virus. But I hope you're all well and I will be back next week with some more masterclasses. And I'm also going to be hosting the XD challenges all of next week. We have five really exciting challenges. So I hope hopefully you all join me for that. Kyle T. Webster's coming up in just a few moments and I will see you all next week. Thanks everyone. Yeah.